Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this Hear, O Israel the Lord our God is the only Lord you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets amen Lord have mercy and so let's join in the following confession most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. 
for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That reading you've just heard comes from John's Gospel. To put it into context, it's placed immediately before his betrayal and crucifixion. This prayer, for that's what it is, never ceases to amaze me in many, many ways. In chapter 17, from which you heard the first part of this morning, you hear Jesus not only glorifying God, we find him praying for himself, his disciples and all believers. And on this Sunday, after the day we remember Jesus ascending into heaven, it's fitting that we should remind ourselves once again just how much he cares for each and every one of us who choose to call him Lord. Now, the set collect for this Sunday after ascension goes like this. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us in the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before. This prayer is the only long continuous prayer of Jesus recorded in the Gospels. What particularly strikes me about it is the sentences are simple, but the ideas are so deep, moving and meaningful. The Bible's filled with examples of people of prayer. As you and I know, prayer comes in many shapes and sizes. In Genesis 18, you find Abraham having what I would call a prayerful conversation. Firstly, about him becoming a dad in his old age, and then for the people of Sodom, pleading on their behalf. Then in Exodus, at chapter 32, you read of Moses having the same kind of prayer at the time when he was given the commandments written on those two tablets of stone. In the book of Kings, at chapter 8, you find King Solomon brings the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to the temple. You read this. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel spread out his hands towards heaven and look it up after this service and read the full prayer. That's just three examples of people who had a living, loving relationship with our good Father in heaven. The prayer that you heard this morning is by far the greatest recorded in the Bible. Jesus prays these beautiful words to his God and Father. By John's recording of this prayer, we enter into a very privileged moment. Jesus speaks directly to his father, the father who he had been with even before the world began. To thank him for all the men and the women who, who he had been given, the ones he met along his way, the ones who chose to follow him, the ones who will need protection and much guidance as they carried on in this world once Jesus had ascended into heaven. He prays for us who belong to him. It struck me when I read this passage over and over again that Jesus isn't talking only about his disciples at that time. He's talking about you and me. He's asking the Father to protect us and he's trusting that this prayer will be answered. We can trust in this prayer at every moment in our lives. We are surrounded by the protection that Jesus has asked for. Remember, at that particular point, Jesus was about to be arrested. He knew his time on earth was coming to a close. He knew he had finished the work on earth to bring glory to God. And Jesus speaks from the depths of his heart. He tells us of the Father's love for him and his love for his Father, who is at the heart and core of his very being. And as we can testify from what we've seen and heard, that love 
continued to be with him right to the end, even to the cross. Christ has died. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You know, to know God is not just head knowledge. It's about knowing him personally. It's about being like those people we read of in the Bible. Abraham and Moses taught us how to have one-to-one -one conversations with God. It's about King Solomon physically rising his hands before God and giving him the glory for all he has been able to do because of God's guidance and wisdom. It's about Jesus praying for us. And we've just got to give all that glory back to God with gratitude and humble thanks. Now, in a book of Revelation at chapter 21, you find these words. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's went. God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for the words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but... Listening to that second reading confirms yet again just exactly who Jesus is. Remember, when he walked this earth, he constantly told people that he had come to fulfill all that had been said about him by the prophets of old. He does that once again in this reading. Behold, I am making all things new. It is done. Jesus is exactly who God said he would be. He also promised that he will be with us always. God is the beginning and the end of all things. He promised that one day he will take all things and make them new again. And we can rest assured that God's words are indeed trustworthy and true. Just to remind us, the passage said that God is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Or oh, you can say it's sort of like saying God is A and Z. He began everything and he will end everything. You heard him promising to give the thirsty a drink and the hungry food. He will be there for us no matter what happens. He will comfort, protect, guide and strengthen us. He will make all things new. Now, how does that happen? How can we know it's true? Well, it's all there in our Bible. We are told constantly. All we have to do is believe, trust and obey. For we have a God who is omnipresent and omnipotent. The first bit of those words are taken from, from Latin, meaning all in everything. The omnipresent tells us Jesus really had overcome death. He wasn't just... He wasn't just resurrected to die again. He didn't live to a ripe old age and die in his sleep. No, he was taken up to heaven, body and soul. This is what we as Christians believe. This is what the ascension of Christ is all about. He is there in everything. There is no doubt that Jesus is alive and with God the Father in heaven and is no longer limited to living on earth. And as for being omnipotent, well, that word shows us a God who isn't only all-knowing and all-seeing. He's absolutely limitless, endless in space or even size. We can be confident his love is so great 
that it's impossible to measure or calculate. So, it's only right on this Sunday after the day we call Jesus ascending into heaven that we should remind ourselves once again just how much he cares for each and every one of us who choose to call him Lord. Now, when Paul wrote to the Romans, he said that nothing can separate us from the love of God. He said, if God is for us, no one can be against us. Now, remember, Paul, he was so against Christ, he led Roman armies all over the place, killing those first century Christians when he was Saul. But once Jesus came into his life, he changed completely. Now, if a man with a reputation like that can learn to believe and trust in the living God, then so can we. Amen. <laughs>trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? 
do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray that aid would get through to where it is most uh, needed around the world. And we think of the charities that we support as a church, uh, the Leprosy Mission, which we recently focused on, and also uh, Tear Funds and the Overseas Missionary Fellowship. And we think of other Christian charities and the work that they do. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our witness as a church, uh, individually and collectively. And, uh, we pray, Lord, for those who are housebound, those perhaps who haven't got internet access, those who feel lonely at this time, those who are unwell. And Lord, we pray that you would surround them with your love and strength. Help us to keep in touch with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we just have a few moments silence as we bring before God any particular concerns or situations that we might wish to pray for. We ask all of these things in the name and for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.